Canals saw the city's growth rocket. But the canals were big business. Canal owners had a monopoly on trade and could almost charge what they wanted. They weren't going to let the rail line be built without a fight. Stevenson's original planned route ran through land belonging to three powerful canal owners, Lord Sefton, Derby and Bradshaw. They made Stevenson's job of surveying the line impossible, blockading their land and even firing live rounds. By the time Stevenson's route was presented to Parliament, there was plenty of anti-railway propaganda. First, they were dangerous. It wasn't unheard of for boilers to explode. But the railways, they said, would also be the death of stagecoach hands. Horses would starve, cows would stop grazing, hens stop laying, and pregnant women would miscarry. A new surveyor was hired, one with a bit more political nous, Charles Vigneault. Vignol rerouted the railway, bypassing some of the greatest objectors and canal owners, and bought off the rest. In 1826, the bill was passed, and Stevenson was rehired to take on the immense engineering challenges of building the line. Crossing a deep valley required the building of the nine-arch Sankey Viaduct. At Olive Mount, people said the deep two-mile cutting looked like it had been dug by giants on the approach to Liverpool, a tunnel over a mile long had to be constructed under the city. The excavation cost many lives. Once finished, it became a tourist attraction before the line went into service. <laughs> 